Yes. Well, let's get some more analysis of the role being played by Qatar. And we can speak now to political analyst and former Middle East advisor at the US Department of Defense, uh, Jasmine El Gamal. Thank you very much indeed for joining us here. Um, how significant would you say the role uh, that Qatar is playing is in these negotiations? Thanks for having me. Uh, the, the role that Qatar is playing is incredibly critical. Qatar has traditionally been a very important actor when it comes to these types of really sensitive negotiations, not just in this current conflict, but if you'll remember also uh, in, in crafting deals uh, between the U.S. and the Taliban, it has traditionally tried to position itself as an actor that has relationships with everybody so that when the time comes for something like this to happen, these negotiations, it can step in and play a constructive role. And, and how do you think uh, Qatar has gone about crafting this niche for itself, particularly uh, with regards to this conflict uh, and, and shuttling between uh, the two sides, uh, between Israel and, and Hamas? You know, I mean, every country has to craft a niche for itself, especially if it's a smaller country or a country that wasn't necessarily uh, um, a big player on the international stage from the get go. You have to craft a niche for yourself to make yourself valuable. And Qatar decided that that was going to be a negotiator role when it came to these kinds of sensitive negotiations, as I mentioned. So historically, they have always uh, sort of allowed, you know, welcomed many different sides and different actors uh, in Qatar or at least had relations with them. So whether it was a U.S. base while at the same time hosting, you know, uh, uh, officials from organizations like Hamas or the Taliban or having an Israeli trade office. I mean, there are all of these ways that Qatar had wanted to make sure that it kept these lines of communication open. And you know, traditionally, it hasn't always been welcomed. I mean, you know, Qatar has had its critics, certainly, uh, in the past who have criticized it for hosting one or the other of these actors that I just mentioned. Um, but it stood its ground and it decided that this was going to be its approach when it comes to international relations. And it's paid off several times. Yeah, indeed, even in, in, in recent memory, uh, the Israeli prime minister has made uh, comments uh, to the effect that he's not comfortable with uh, the Qataris uh, playing that role. Um, just to look at the difference between the role Qatar is playing and the role of, of other regional powers, because of course it's not the only regional power uh, playing an important diplomatic role. There's the, the Saudis, there's the Egyptians. I mean, how, how would you say they rank? And uh, whose role out of those three or anybody else in the region would you say is the most valuable of all? That's an interesting question. I think I would rather than say who has the biggest role or the most important role, I would just describe it as having different roles, different aspects of, of the situation. I mean, obviously, Egypt and Jordan have traditionally ha have peace treaties, first of all, with Israel. And then Egypt has also had ties with Hamas leadership. Of course, they share a border uh, with, with Gaza. And so they've had to maintain those ties in order to be able to uh, to deal with Hamas as, it, as necessary in order to preserve Egyptian interests from time to time, but also in order to be helpful in negotiations. Uh, Qatar obviously hosts members um, uh, of Hamas and in, in Doha have hosted and also have played a really important role when it comes to having those direct links so that they could be able to push the, the Hamas uh, officials closer and maybe push them a bit farther than they've wanted to be pushed or would prefer to be pushed. They have that clout in order to be able to do that with Hamas because of the relationship that they have. And then, of course, the Saudis are playing a big role, not necessarily in these negotiations, but from a broader perspective, if we zoom out and look at the normalization talks that were happening between Saudi Arabia and Israel, mediated by the U.S., that's a carrot that they have on the table to sort of, you know, 
um, try to push the Americans to put more pressure on the Israelis in order to end this war sooner. You know, the sooner this war ends, basically, and the Israeli forces withdraw from Gaza, the sooner the Saudis come back to the negotiating table with the Israelis when it comes to normalization. So you can see that every one of these regional countries really has a slightly different angle that they take when it comes to regional disputes. Okay, and just lastly, I mean, just singling out Qatar once again, I mean, do you think we're looking here at a country that uh, longer term is going to be a, a present force on the, on the global stage when it comes to negotiating not just this particular conflict, uh, but other disputes and other uh, conflicts around, around the world? I do envision that. I do see that, not just because of its track record, obviously, that we've mentioned a few successful cases in the past, but also I think that even Israel, I mean, you mentioned the Israeli prime minister criticizing Qatar recently. I was at a conference recently in Munich where the Israeli president was actually thanking the Qataris for what they've been doing on a public stage. And so I think that you've seen even former critics or somewhat you know, regular critics of Qatar come to see that sometimes you do need that actor that will act as a bridge and will have that leverage to get you out of tough situations like we see now. So they've been successful at doing that. Obviously, as your correspondent mentioned, they've been appreciated for doing that, as you see right now with the with the state visit in France. And so I don't see any reason why they wouldn't continue to invest in that role that they're playing as a mediator in really tough situations. Okay, well, thank you very much indeed for taking the time to speak to us. Uh, political analyst and former uh, Middle East advisor at the U.S. Department of Defense, uh, Jasmine Al-Kamal, thank you very much indeed.